Welcome to Fantasia, home of the Melodious. My name is Azalea, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys an update to my Lunar Light deck. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. First of all, we are playing standard three copies of Lunar Light White Rabbit. Now, Lunar Light White Rabbit, when you normal summon her, allows you to special summon one other Lunar Light monster from your graveyard to your field in defense position. She also acts as a mini giant true nade and allows you to bounce spell and trap cards your opponent controls up to the number of other Lunar Light cards that you control. So she basically clears the way for us to go in and uh, do some damage. Uh, next off, we are playing three copies of Lunar Light Black Sheep. Now, Black Sheep has two effects. Uh, the first is you can discard her to add one polymerization from your deck to your hand, and the uh, other is you can discard her to add a Lunar Light monster from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, so when she's used for a fusion summon, you can also add one Lunar Light monster from your graveyard or your extra deck back to your hand, which allows you to recover resources and go for more plays. Um, next off, we are playing three copies of Lunar Light Blue Cat. Now, Blue Cat um, basically allows us to go for a lot of damage because she allows us to, once she is special summoned, uh, target one other Lunar Light monster you control and double its attack. Um, she's also the floater of the deck, so if she's destroyed by battle or by card effects, you can special summon another Lunar Light monster straight from your deck. And she can special summon herself, so you can kind of do a mini loop with her and uh, keep that going to prevent yourself from getting OTK'd. Uh, she works really well in conjunction with Luna Light Purple Butterfly. Now I play only two copies of Luna Light Purple Butterfly because I am playing Pendulum cards, so I can Pendulum uh, Blue Cat out. But basically, what Purple Butterfly does is um, you can banish this card from your graveyard to special summon one Luna Light monster from your hand. Um, so normally you're special summoning Blue Cat so she can boost something else. But Purple Butterfly also has another effect where you can uh, send this card from your hand or your side of the field to the graveyard to target one Lunar Light monster you control and it gains a thousand attack. So I guess you can think of it as like a mini Honest of sorts, but um, obviously a lot weaker. But it's definitely a good card to have and can boost your fusions to attack over big threats. So next off, we are playing three copies of Luna Light Tiger. Now, Luna Light Tiger is an amazing card and probably the main combo piece of this deck, uh, except for uh, White Rabbit and Black Sheep. So what Tiger does in the Pendulum Scales, you can once per turn target one Luna Light monster in your grief, you're in special summon it, and um, but its effects negate it, can't attack, and all that good stuff. But when she is destroyed at, by battle or by card effect on the field, including in your pendulum zone, you can special summon one Lunar Light monster from your graveyard, no restrictions attached. So she allows you to go for a ton of plays, especially with Blue Cat where you can just make rank 4s for days. <laughs> okay, so moving on for the last Lunar Light monster, we play two copies of Lunar Light Wolf. Now Lunar Light Wolf um, basically allows you to... Uh, when she's in the Pendulum Scale, banish Lunar Light monsters from your field or your graveyard to fusion summon um, a fusion monster from your extra deck, a Lunar Light one. So, really good for bringing out Leo Dancer and sometimes even Panther Dancer. Uh, but I, no, but normally you wouldn't use this effect too much because you want to maintain your resources to be able to loop with Tiger. Uh, but she is definitely good to have, and she also has a field effect where, uh, as a monster, she gives all your Lunar Lights piercing damage. So really good if your opponent's trying to wall up and you can just push for game anyway. Uh, so next off, we're going to a mini engine of mine, the uh, Odd Eyes engine. So we run two copies of Perform Pal Odd Eyes Unicorn. Now this card is really good because it's a scale 8, so you can pendulum summon things like Lunar Light Wolf, um, as well as Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, which I am running. Uh, and... In conjunction with that, we're running one copy of Perform Pal Odd Eyes Light Phoenix. Now, Light Phoenix is just another searchable target by Sky Iris, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, but basically, this is scale 3, and that's a scale 8. So between that, they can summon blue cats and uh, other level 4s. And they can also summon uh, Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon um, from the extra deck, which is really nice to have. Uh, and it's just a searchable scale 3, so that's the reason why I keep it, because if you have uh, White Phoenix and Tiger, that's a scale th uh, 3 to 5, so you can pendulum summon Blue Cat. Uh, Odd Eyes, uh, Odd Eyes Unicorn is a scale 8, so between Tiger and Unicorn, you can pendulum summon Odd Eyes, because that's a scale of 5 to 8. And so these scales just really work uh, well together to be able to summon a variety of things from your extra deck. 
Uh, speaking of which, I run one copy of Odd Ice Pendulum Dragon, uh, just because he is a good beat stick, he has a good effect, and he also, in the Pendulum Scale, uh, during the end phase, you can destroy him to search a um, Pendulum Monster with 1500 or less attack. And Tiger fits that um, requirement, so you can actually search Tiger off of it and continue your combo string next turn. Okay, so that's it for the monsters. Moving on into the spell cards, we we're playing the mandatory three copies of Fire Formation Tanky, which searches out any of our Beast Warrior type monsters, level four or lower. And a really, really strong card to have in the deck. Also, it gives uh, our Beast Warrior type monsters 100 attack boost, uh, which is seems small, but it is actually uh, very important for getting over, uh, just barely getting over some of the bigger monsters in the game right now. So this is a fusion deck, so we are obviously running two copies of Polymerization to go for our fusion plays, and in conjunction with that we play one copy of Fusion Substitute. The only difference is uh, Fusion Substitute uh, has to fuse using monsters from the field, but that is fine because we do have White Rabbit and Black Sheep, and so those um, meet the requirement because you discard Black Sheep, normal summon White Rabbit, bring back Black Sheep, and then you fuse with them with Fusion Substitute to bring out Cat Dancer. And so that is the basic combo. Also, you can uh, banish Fusion Substitute from your graveyard to return one Fusion Monster from your graveyard back to your extra deck to draw one card. So it is pretty good, and you don't always need three polymerizations. So definitely having this to just cycle through cards and draw more cards is really nice to have. Uh, next off, because we run go through our polymerization so fast, we have to run two copies of Fusion Recovery, which basically allows us to add back the polymerization that we used and another Fusion Material Monster that we used from our graveyard back to our hand. Really good plus one and really good for the resource department. Uh, next off, we are running two copies of Terraforming for our engine to search out our field spell two copies of Sky Iris. Now, Sky Iris is a very powerful card and allows us to target um, one card, that face-up card that we control, uh, destroy it, and then search out an Odd Eyes uh, card from our deck and add it to our hand. Uh, and it also protects our uh, Odd Eyes and Perform Pal monsters in our extra deck, so people can't Twin Twisters or MST or uh, Light Phoenix or Unicorn inside your Pendulum Scales without getting rid of Sky Iris first. So it's really annoying for them, and it's really good for you. Uh, Sky Iris has a really good combo by destroying either Blue Cat uh, to search something and then summon another blue cat or whatever you need from your uh, deck. Or you can pop Tiger and then bring back anything that you want from your graveyard. Uh, so it has a lot of synergy with the deck and I highly recommend you try it out. Uh, next off we are playing Spell and Trap Removal, two copies of Twin Twisters. Uh, because this, this deck can afford the discard so I'm not too worried about that. And you can always discard Purple Butterfly, and Purple Butterfly can banish itself to summon something else. So it's just really good for enabling combos as well. Uh, next off, we are running two copies of Mass Change 2. Uh, this is a thing that I've been testing out, and it's actually been testing pretty well. Um, bringing out Dark Law in this deck is just absolutely phenomenal. Dark Law is a really strong and powerful card, and it is very annoying for a lot of meta decks to get around, especially because of how much they search and because of how much they rely on their graveyards. So definitely this adds a lot of disruption to the deck and gives the deck a really good first turn play, because this deck was lacking in the first turn play department. Usually you'd summon maybe a Cat Dancer defense mode and hope that they don't remove it from the field, but Dark Law first turn is really, really powerful. Uh, next off, we are running one copy of Upstart Goblin for that haha <laughs> consistency, and then we are running one copy of uh, Raigeki. So, just to remove all the monsters from the field that we do not like, and um, especially problem monsters that can maybe negate our uh, cards or things like that. Uh, Last but not least, we're playing two copies of Luna Light Reincarnation Dance for our trap cards. So Luna Light Reincarnation Dance basically says if a monster you control is destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can add up to two Luna Light monsters uh, from your deck to your hand. But you can only activate one a turn, which is why I cut this down from three to two, because I opened up too many uh, <laughs> copies at the same time. So you can't Obviously, you can't use more than one per turn, so it started becoming dead and started becoming a hindrance to my combos. So I decided to put it to two, which I think it's been testing pretty nicely at. Next off, we are going to go into the side deck. Alright, so for the side deck, we are playing two copies 
of max C. Now, max C basically is just a deterrent for opponent's special summons, and we get to draw a card every time they do. Um, and the reason why I play in here is because blue eyes is going to be a big thing, uh, at least an upcoming big thing. So, uh, what it does for blue eyes is, let's say they normal summon a sage. If they don't continue on with their plays, they have a zero attack monster on the field, and you just can summon a panther dancer and completely like wipe the field with them. <laughs> so um, for them to leave out really weak monsters is very bad for them. So what they really want to do is make a, maybe a white spear dragon and stuff, but that will give you at least two draws. So that is very good uh, in that regard where you're either plussing or you're going to be able to do mass amounts of damage the following turn. Uh, so I believe that Maxi is a very good card in this deck. Um, there's just not enough space in the main deck for it, or else I would be maining it, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll have to look into making some space for that, maybe, in the future. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on with the monsters, we are running three copies of Kumungus, the Sticky String Kaiju. Now, I run Kumungus instead of Gamma Seal because this is a level 7, and you can, if you special summon it to your side of the field, if you open multiples, uh, you can... Uh, actually make rank 7 plays with uh, Cat Dancer or Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Uh, but normally what you want to do is just tribute your opponent's problem monsters, like Dark Destroyer to prevent them from floating, maybe some bigger attack, higher attack monsters like Ultimate Falcon or things that are unaffected, uh, just so that you have something to attack over and get rid of and clear the field. Um, so next off we are playing one copy of Spell Shattering Arrow. Uh, Spell Shattering Arrow is a really good card and I believe it's a good side deck card against Pendulum decks. I didn't want to play MST because um, MST only hits one card, but this can hit both Pendulum scales, and it doesn't require a discard like Twin Twisters. So uh, when you destroy all face-up cards, that, all face-up spell cards that your opponent controls, and then you inflict 500 damage to them for each that was destroyed. So it's a very good card, and I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for uh, things to side deck against uh, Pendulums. Okay, so. Next off, we were playing one copy of Dark Hole, because I like going second, and I like to clear the field before um, going into my plays. That's the most ideal situation. <laughs> uh, speaking of clearing fields, we play two copies of System Down, against decks like Cosmos, against other rogue, maybe machine-type decks. ABCs will be a thing in the future, so this card is definitely um, a very powerful card, uh, but ABCs won't be around for... Uh, won't be out for uh, a while, so it's really good against Cosmos right now, and I would definitely recommend running it. Uh, it's better than Imperial Iron Wall in this deck in particular, because you want to be able to banish stuff with Lunar Light Wolf, your um, Fusion Substitute, and your Lunar Light Purple Butterfly uh, for their effects. So System Down is just a very good alternative for just clearing the field without affecting your own cards. Next off, I play one copy of Breakthrough Skill. Uh, I don't run any effect negation in this deck, so Breakthrough Skill is actually very strong. Uh, you can use it uh, again on your turn. Um, so if your opponent has something like Cyber Dragon Infinity or something, you can just negate it and the, or bait it out with this and then go off without having to worry. Um, and yeah, so definitely uh, much better than Effect Veiler right now in my opinion, just because the fact that Effect Veiler doesn't really hit much Right now, uh, I'm expecting Monarchs to get hit, so uh, without Monarchs, I don't think Effect Veil is going to be that effective. And so, I definitely think Breakthrough Skill, just a one-off copy tech, is good enough in terms of effect negation for now. Uh, <laughs> speaking of saying no, we play one copy of Solemn Warning, say no to all the summons. Um, and even better, we we're playing one copy of Solemn Scolding, which says no to like everything. So you pay 3,000 life points, and you basically negate the summon of a monster, the effect of a monster, or the spell a trap card. So it negates basically everything in the game, <laughs> and it's a very, very powerful card. Um, but the only downside is you have to, it has to be the only set card on your side of the field in, in the spell and trap zone. So, uh, but this isn't a problem because we only play two traps in our main deck, uh, the Reincarnation Dance. So you'll definitely have, like, no other back row. <laughs> and so this will be live most of the time. Um, uh, next off, we were playing one copy of Vanity's Emptiness. Uh, Vanity's Emptiness, kind of the same reason with like Max C, uh, except that instead of deterring them, you're saying no to them uh, in terms of special summoning. So if they have like uh, 
a small uh, tuner monster and it's talking about blue eyes where they have like a uh, sage of eyes of blue or they have white stone of ancients or something on the field um you just stop them from making uh, summoning anything else and then you just keep down the field and then you can just attack over it with panther dancer or any other monster that you have for pretty massive amounts of damage also, um, to wrap things up, we are playing two copies of Royal Decree. If you're ever playing a deck that has a lot of trap cards, uh, Royal Decree just shuts them down. Uh, and it's definitely a really good card. Um, and yeah, so if Card Demise does not get hit or anything, and set five back row decks are still a thing, Royal Decree is very powerful against those as well. And that is it for the side deck. Next off, we'll be going into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, we are playing one copy of Sky Calvary Centauria. Sky Calvary Centauria is a really strong card, and I would recommend playing it because it's probably one of the best ranked twos in the game. Uh, that's generic. So White Rabbit and Black Sheep can easily make that. Uh, one copy of Abyss Dweller, just because Abyss Dweller negates all the graveyard effects, and it's pretty easy to make rank fours in this build. Uh, one Diamond Direwolf, just to pop unnecessary uh, threats like back row, so we can just go straight for the damage. Um, next off, playing one copy of Sky Castell, the Sky Blaster Musketeer. <laughs> um, just spin anything that's a very problematic card. Uh, next off, Brotherhood the Fire Fist, Tiger King, very, very powerful card. Uh, if you use two uh, blue casts to uh, summon it most of the time, and then you can set one fire formation from your deck, um, which is going to be Tenki, and then you can search with Tenki. You can also detach one material, and he becomes a skill drain for the turn, uh, negating everything except Beast Warrior type monsters, which basically everything except Luna Lights and himself. Uh, so it's very, very powerful in that regard as well. Uh, and wrapping up the uh, rank fours, we play one copy of uh, Utopia, followed by Utopia Lightning, just to get over any big major threats. And to wrap off all the XYZ monsters, we play one copy of number 11, Big Eye. Because Big Eye is just a blowout card, and it can take control of anything your opponent controls, uh, as long as it's not immune to targeting. So that is it for the XYZ monsters. Next off, going to go into the fusion monsters. Alright, so we are playing one copy of Masked Hero Dark Law. Now Dark Law is an amazing first turn play, and he is a one-sided macrocosmos, so anything of your opponents that goes to Graveyard will be banished instead. And he is also very good to turn for searching, because every time your opponent adds a card from uh, their deck to their hand, they have to banish one card in their hand. Um, and that is once per turn, but it is still very good to prevent your opponent from trying to search before they can get rid of this. And they usually have to use a lot of resources to play around it, which is very good for us. Uh, next off, we are playing three copies of Lunalite Cat Dancer. This is the basic uh, Lunalite fusion requiring two Lunalite monsters. And uh, what you can do is you can tribute um, one other Lunalite monster you control to allow her to attack each of your opponent's monsters twice. Um, and every time she attacks, she inflicts 100 damage to your opponent. While it might not seem like a lot, it really does start to add up uh, if you start attacking a lot of monsters that your opponent controls. And also, she cannot be destroyed in battle, so she's also not bad as a first turn play, just keep her in defense mode, and um, some decks actually have quite a bit of trouble getting over something that can't be destroyed by battle. <laughs> okay. Uh, so next off, we are running two copies of Luna Light Panther Dancer. Now, Panther Dancer is like Cat Dancer, where you can attack each of your opponent's monsters twice each, but you don't have to tribute a monster, you just have to activate her effect in main phase one before you go into the battle phase, which is very nice. Um, she is basically the main fusion of the deck, uh, but she does require uh, Luna Light Cat Dancer and one other Luna Light monster to fusion summon her. Uh, so she is a little more difficult to bring out, but she is definitely worth it. And um, she is also... Uh, immune to destruction effects, so things like Regeki and such cannot destroy her, uh, so she is very, very useful. Um, and I, in my opinion, I believe that she is the best fusion of the deck. Um, obviously, we also play one copy of Luna Light Leo Dancer to wrap things up. Uh, Leo Dancer cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects, but she is a lot more harder to summon. Um, so Leo Dancer can attack twice each, uh, each battle phase. Uh, but the thing is, she does require a Panther Dancer and two other Luna Light monsters. So I cut her down from two copies to one, because with this Odd Eyes variant and the engine that I'm running, I really don't summon the second Leo Dancer quite as often as I used to in my pure variant, uh, just because I don't need it with all the other monsters I'm summoning. And also, Leo Dancer, if you really want to summon another one, if your opponent Kaiju did or somehow got rid of it, you can just 
add it back to your extra deck with black sheep, and then you can summon it again. So it's definitely not a huge problem in that regard, uh, playing only one. And so yeah, that is it for the extra deck. And that is it for the deck profile. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoyed it or found this video helpful, uh, please give it a like. Subscribe for more Luna Light content and leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.